Hello, and welcome to my Facebook Live for the No Complaining Project. I am uh, Sianna Stewart, and this is the No Complaining Project. Um, I'm going to be making a lot of references to a book that I just published um, called No Complaints, How to Stop Sabotaging Your Own Joy. And if you haven't picked it up yet, it is available on Amazon. Um, and you can pick it up for Kindle. It'll come out in print pretty soon, but it's not uh, out yet. Just working out those final details, which takes a little while when it comes to print. So uh, go to um, Amazon, check out No Complaints. And uh, if you don't have the book, it's no big deal because we are going to be going over all kinds of things tonight and I'll be catching you up. Uh, you don't have to have read anything. So Again, I am Sianna Stewart, and this is the No Complaining Project. Um, I am very devoted to uh, helping everybody free themselves of complaints, to learn to connect with each other, to actually help uh, connect people, have better conversations, help you face the things that you're avoiding. Um, there's a lot of things that get buried inside of complaints, and so I spent several years unpacking them and have written all of that out into the book, which I know that I just mentioned, but there it is again for those of you just joining. Um, I came to a specific definition of complaining, which is, uh, in general, the, the dictionaries just talk about it as expressing grief, pain, or discontent. But when we talk about somebody as being such a complainer, there's actually a little bit more that, um, in general, that we're referencing. And so the definition that I work with is it's expressing grief, pain, or discontent without contributing to solving the problem. And that really is the problem. It's the fact that people are just airing negativity to somebody, even if somebody is actually trying to offer some suggestions on how to make things better, they don't want to hear it. They push that those suggestions away and they just kind of keep complaining. And that's what's very exhausting. Over time, this can make people pull away from you. It can make uh, long-term loving relationships get a little colder. Um, it can, it just, it tends to just erode connection and relationships. So it's a good thing to keep in the front of your mind. Um that complaining, as defined as expressing grief, pain, or discontent without contributing to solving the problem, is a real, really bad thing for all of your relationships. So um, working with that definition, especially for people who are complaining unconsciously and um, habitually, which we're, we're in a complaining culture, uh, you know, no doubts about that. And we tend to not even notice how often we're complaining, or we sometimes notice how often others are complaining, but not necessarily how much we are. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, start to pay attention to your own speaking habits and, uh, and you'll, you know, start cleaning things up right away, even just by becoming aware of it. When we talk about chronic and habitual complainers, often they don't understand why people are pulling away. They just know that they're not getting invited to dinner or that people don't like to hang out with them or they're just um, not getting the promotions that they think that they should or people don't want to include them on their work teams or, you know, there's a, there's a lot, host of things that go along with not wanting to have somebody who's really negative um, and also not trying to solve their problems. Um, and that's, uh, again, that's the key that if you don't want to solve your problems, people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hang out with you after a point. So um, that is a, that's the target of the entire No Complaining Project. So again, if you ha are joining us on Facebook from elsewhere and you're not a member of the No Complaining Project, um, join the group. The, you know, that's the address, uh, facebook.com, No Complaining Project. Um, and there's also a website, uh, gonoco.com. And that is a, NoCo is the idea of going no complaining and taking it on as a daily practice. It's not, there's no magic button that I can push and just make you not a complainer, but you can take it on as a practice for yourself and uh, just watch what 
changes all around you. It's, it's actually kind of magical. Um, so go noco.com. There's a blog over there. There's more resources. Um, and, uh, you can go check it out. So we are specifically talking tonight about how to deal with complaining over the holidays. Um, I know that a lot of people have been writing to me and they also just talk to me, um, and ask about how to deal with it when you have taken on a no complaining practice, um, or are generally trying to stay more positive in your life, but uh, members of your family that you're going home for the holidays, that they are not so positive. Um, and how do you maintain your equanimity or your resolve in the face of that? Um, and also that tends to, uh, there are a lot of times when people's most intense complaints are actually about their families. So this is a time when I think a lot of people struggle with complaining over the holidays. And um, so that's specifically what I wanted to talk about tonight, try to give you a couple of tips on things that you can do to help yourself out, um, with dealing with complaining over the holidays. Um, so one of the things that was the most interesting to me when I started studying complaining and, and becoming aware of it in my own life, uh, is when I realized that almost every complaint, almost every complaint can be boiled down to, um, or restated as I wish reality wasn't happening. Like, that's actually kind of amazing that that's really what complaints are. You're just saying, oh, I see what reality is and I just wish it wasn't happening. But not actually changing to make reality match what you want it to be or just getting away from it, just kind of wishing as if that will actually make a difference. But it doesn't make a difference. So, um, you know, if you if you think about it that way, that it starts to become really absurd and one of the ways to get out of complaints is to add a little levity, um, recognize that absurdity and, uh, you can start to play with it. Uh, you can also start to think about, you know, one of the useful things about noticing that is you can start to figure out what reality do you wish was happening? Is there anything that you wish that could actually be made to, to happen? Is there a shift in the mood or the location or the music or the whatever, um, that you can actually change? So then once you've pointed to that, now you can actually take some steps to, to make your preferred reality, uh, reality. <laughs> um, really that's, it's one of the tools in the kit is to, to recognize that when you're complaining, you're complaining, you're comparing what is happening to some imagined reality, something, there's something in your head that says, this is what I wish was happening. Um, and when you have that rec, you know, ability to recognize that, then you can start to say like, well, what is it that I'm wishing for? What, what do I wish was happening instead? What do I, um, how could I possibly change this to make it feel better for me? So, um, that's a, that's a solid tip. Start using your complaints as a tool for helping you point to and, and understand and recognize that there's something else that you wish was happening to start breaking down and saying, well, what specifically is it that I wish was happening? And can I do anything to make that happen? That's a, it's a really, really powerful thing. It starts to get you out of a, the passive victim sounding uh, voice, which is what complaints really, they make you sound like a victim. They make you sound like, oh, I wish reality wasn't happening. I can't do anything about it. Um, which is, you know, sometimes it's true, but a lot of times you can, you can change what is happening. You can change, you can walk away from it, or at least you can change your uh, response to it. You can change your, the way that you're feeling about it. Um, quick pause for water. So <clears throat> once again, for those of you who are just joining, um, I'm Sienna Stewart and this is, uh, the no complaining project. Uh, you should come on by and, and join us. And you can also head on over to gonoco.com and, uh, check out the posts there about all kinds of different things, including some things that are related to, um, complaining over the holidays, which is what we're talking about tonight. Um, so in the book, uh, no complaints, 
that thing that I was talking about with um, I wish reality wasn't happening, that's I cover it in chapter five um, and give you some just a, the, uh, the book is basically like a workshop in book form. So you can you go through and you uh, re read short lessons and then there's some provocative questions. And if you actually work your way through it, it's uh, very transformative. And I definitely turn my life around and quite a few other people have had a great amount of success with these exercises. So I wanted to get it out to you um, as quickly as possible. So it's available uh, on Kindle and it is um, going to be in print hopefully very soon. Um, and it'll be on other uh, digital platforms later on. Right now, um, just sticking with Amazon and keeping it streamlined, you know, self-published author life is uh, all about managing my level of activity. <laughs> so um, we're going to go a little bit more deeper into um, the what other tricks you can use or not really tricks, but actually one of the things about complaining that I realized is that you're often complaining because you've got some kind of a strong emotion or want or desire that's underlying it that you're not ready to express. So um, when you listen to somebody, try to figure out who is complaining or when you're complaining yourself, try to figure out what is it that they're actually wanting? What is it that I'm actually feeling? Um, for example, one of the things that I noticed about complaining is that it is the most socially acceptable way to get everybody to pay attention to you in a group. So if you've got a group that's talking and <clears throat> somebody starts to feel neglected, one of the things that they might do is to start to complain. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and they'll tell a story about something that happened that was or they'll, they'll start pointing to aches and pains or um, disappointments and, and you get um, like a lot of like sympathy attention, you know, people, people will refocus the conversation and often and start paying attention to the person who's complaining. And um, that's a pretty powerful way to get attention when you're feeling neglected. But the underlying thing is that that person is feeling neglected or they're feeling like the group is having a conversation that they can't participate in or, or something like that. And, you know, if you can recognize that that's what somebody is doing, you can um, potentially go in and actually talk to them about something that they really care about, something that's exciting, something that can act, can still give them that feeling of being connected, which is what they're really looking for and do it in a positive way. So asking about um, any any topics that they have uh, that, they, that you know that they care about, asking them, if, you know, what is it that makes them passionate? What is it that gets them excited? Um, you know, over the holidays, we're also generally invited to um, express our gratitude more openly than we are the rest of the year. So you can say like, you know, what are some really great things that have happened to you in 2017 that, um, I know that there's a lot of hard things that are going on and that's, I can totally hear that. And I'm also just wondering like, you know, what, um, what went well for you? Cause that would be cool to hear or not even what went well, but you know, did you have, um, were, did you, did you get to take any trips? Did you achieve anything? You know, what, um, what has felt really good, you know, try to just try to connect with somebody on something that's positive. Um, and, uh, so that, that is a little bit done in chapter 16 of no complaints. Um, and, uh, that is a, um, it's a powerful thing to see that how much complaining is linked to feeling alone and to, um, uh, try to address the feeling aloneness as opposed to trying to deal with the complaining. Also, when you're, when you are noticing that, um, I find for myself that I can get a lot more empathetic to somebody, um, especially if there's somebody who complains a lot. And I, if I, instead of feeling, focusing on how I don't like listening to the complaints, if I focus instead on noticing that they feel really alone, um, or that they're feeling scared or, you know, in pain. Um, it gives me a point with that I can empathize with. And, um, I can certainly relate to feeling alone and in pain and, and, um, and it gives me, it opens my heart. It just softens my heart to, uh, somebody who's 
normally I would harden my heart um, because I don't like listening to the complaints. If I can instead think about what it is that's underlying it, um, that just that just makes me a lot softer and a lot more tolerant of um, what they're saying. So that's chapter 16. Um, in chapter 21, um, uh, one of the weirder uh, versions of complaining that I notice is that sometimes people are complaining about somebody else or about something else um, because they want to feel superior. Um, a complaint is around how something is dumb or somebody is dumb or this situation was dumb um, and uh, and that they didn't deserve it or whatever. And it's because they are <clears throat> they are wanting to feel superior. Often that comes out of a point of insecurity. And um, there's something some way in which uh, that somebody is feeling that they're being compared unfavorably to somebody else or that they have to prove something or they're feeling just like insecure in this situation because they don't know people or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but, you know, again, this is another moment where I can get a little softer to somebody who is complaining about other people or things or situations being stupid or dumb or annoying or whatever um, by, by noticing that I think that they're actually feeling insecure um, and feeling like they need to prove themselves and they need to tell me that like something is dumb because they want me to notice that they're smart, for example. So that's, um, that's one of the other, other things that is often underlying some complaints. One of the more common things that comes up when we talk about complaining is <clears throat> how much it's used to bond. Um, so many people bond with each other through complaining um, it's actually kind of uh, astonishing, really, if you take a look at it. But that's the way that this entire culture is. So um, when we are um, bonding through complaining, it's, you know, so common. It's, it's almost hard to notice that it's happening. But the truth is that we can bond over so many things and we can find points of connection, things that are fun, um, to talk about things that are fun to do together, uh, just know that by, by saying like, oh, Rick, what's going on right now is that people want to feel connected to each other. They want to feel like they're on the same side, that they, that they are, you know, if they're collectively complaining about something else, then often they just want to feel like connected over here. So, um, you know, that's, that's something to, to think about that people want to bond and trying to say, find points of avenues of conversation or connection, introduce a game or something, because um, ultimately that's what people are really looking for. Often they're not like, Ooh, I want to go into a group and complain. Like, it's not like you set out to do that, but you do feel like you just want to connect with people and bond. So um, that is uh, another thing to, to watch out for. That's in chapter 15, um, complaining to bond. So uh, for those of you who are just coming on or joining us late, this is <clears throat> No Complaints, um, How to Stop Sabotaging Your Own Joy is the book that I keep referencing. Um, it's out on Amazon Kindle. And um, let's see. We also <clears throat> wanted to talk about um, complaining out of distorted expectations. Like if you think something was supposed to be a particular way and then it doesn't happen that way, um, or somebody was supposed to know something or do something. Um, and that didn't happen. Sometimes people are not willing to say so directly, um, express that disappointment directly. Sometimes they don't even know what it is that they are struggling with or why they're really upset. Um, and so often that's because they have distorted expectations, but they haven't really articulated them. So, what I, what I recommend doing is to, if you're the one who's complaining and something's really bothering you, take a moment and say, <clears throat> what did I think was going to happen? What am I comparing this to? What, what is the, the distortion? Because something is happening right here, but clearly it's not what I expected or wanted. So what is it that I expected or wanted? And then try to articulate that and ask for it directly. See if you can make uh, make it more clear. You know, we, we all spend way too much time doing, ex expecting people to do mind reading. 
and it is uh, not healthy um, and leads to a lot of um, low level or sometimes quite explosive resentment. Uh, and, and it's generally not fair because if you don't actually say that you wanted something to happen or somebody to do something, you can't really expect it to just magically happen or for them to know that you wanted that. So sometimes we can wish that people can read our minds, but most of the time people can't. And um, we uh, should learn how to be a little bit more direct with our requests and more clear for ourselves about what we're expecting to happen. Um, so this is uh, this is all uh, catching catching up everybody on uh, this is dealing with no complaint with no complaining generally uh, in gen for the no complaining project that um, and uh, it is uh, my project on Facebook and also there's a website the go no co .com, no co being for no complaining which is the practice that I highly recommend you take on it will change your life um, and I, it's not really at all an exaggeration changed mine and has been amazing for so many other people um, and uh, I feel a lot less stress and I'm more empowered to actually ask for things and I generally feel more in control of my life as a result of this and that is not only true for me but for many many people that I've worked with over the years so um, go no code.com bunch of resources over there um, so in the book uh, no complaints um, here's another tip if you've picked up the book um there's in chapter 25 um there's a link to go get some resources for this next section but you can do this without any of the resources but the resources are fun and pretty um some uh, signage to help you create no co zones and so a no co zone is a no complaining zone and it is a place where if you are in control of that space or that time um, you can ask people to uh, say no complaining for a particular time period um, or in a particular location. And this is particularly great if you are inviting people over to your house and the, you are the one hosting for um, the holidays. You can set up a no complaining zone at the dinner table or maybe the whole house or in the wherever you're going to after dinner and just sitting in the sitting room or whatever. Um, ask people, you know, let them know that you've decided to take on the practice of no complaining and that you're extending it to um, the house. And so you can tell them that, you know, we're working on complaining specifically as expressing a grievance or uh, some distress, but without contributing to resolving the issue and ask people to say, anytime you're going to say something, please be sure to also uh, express what it is that you want done. And so that we move away from complaining and into problem solving um, and not uh, just staying in like a loop of saying what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. Um, and, and which gets very exhausting, but a no co zone is a really great way to just practice even just like little, little bits of this while you're um, you know, with a lot of other people and get people on board you can get into a, quite a lively conversation about what complaining is and isn't um trust me i have gone through many of them and it is very lively and fun um and uh and you know also a little bit weird because you're naming something that most people just uh secretly hate um but don't actually talk about openly which is a lot of what the, the no co practice is about is uh, dealing openly with things that people are just sort of letting lapse and be destructive in the background. Um, if you are not the one hosting for the holidays, you can, you can make your car a no-co zone. Um, so, or the walk or whatever, so that on the way to wherever you are going for the holidays and maybe on the way back, um, no complaining, just, you know, no need to rehash or to hash out what is, uh, so exhausting. Try to instead stay connected to the people who are right there and not give all of the attention to, um, 
if you if you are feeling like complaining a lot about what happened, say over uh, your holiday dinner, um, instead of just making that the grinding, exhausting conversation on the way home, instead focus on some of the things that were fun, um, or just talk about something else altogether, something that connects you with the people that are immediately with you and doesn't just sit and focus on everybody that's you know way back in the um, the wherever you just came from the holiday dinner. Um, a couple more tips. I'm only going to wrap up in about five minutes here. Um, there's uh, some really good, uh, solid research about a three to one ratio for, um, positivity. So in general, if you are complaining, you can't stop it. Try to, or somebody else's try to ask for three positive things, saying three positive things in, uh, every time you say one negative thing, just let the complaints happen, but you have to balance them out. And because of the way that our brains are wired, where we have a uh, much better memory and better awareness and a much faster amount of attention and emotion on things that are negative, um, you should, uh, balance it out with a three to one ratio minimum of things that are positive, um, if you want to complain about a person, then, uh, say whatever it is that's bothering you and then say three positive things about them as well. Every single time. <laughs> um, and, uh, that'll, that'll start to shift your mood and hopefully, um, over time, it's something that you can actually, um, start to have fewer complaints about because you're going to focus instead on the things that are good. And this is also a way of training your brain because we tend to remember and pay attention to and notice much more quickly anything that we're actually like focusing on and complaints really focus you on what's going wrong. It makes you pay attention only to that. And by complaining all the time, we only see the negative things that are out there in the world. So by telling yourself, giving yourself a rule that you have to say three positive things for every negative thing, then you're just training your brain to look for things that are positive. And that's, uh, over time, it will help to rewire your brain so that it becomes more powerfully or more, it's a lot easier for you to notice the positive things. Cause when you start often, it's like, I can't see anything good about this situation or this person. Um, but you were like really sort of crank on it and just make your brain. And over time, you know, it'll come together and, and, and it starts to get like a lot easier until it becomes a habit. And then it's like, Oh, every time you say something bad, you just all like immediately start to think about, okay, what are the good things? And, and it's just like much more, you gain greater facility for it because <clears throat> your brain is much more ready to do it. <clears throat> and here's a little, little, uh, two more, two more tricks here. Um, often when somebody does something that disappoints you or angers you, um, a lot of times the complaints are around something like they should have known better. Um, and why would they do that or how could they? And, um, I would say, invite yourself to think that you don't know the whole story and, uh, because you don't. Nobody knows anybody else's full story. You don't know exactly what's going on inside of somebody's head or their entire history or their dreams and how that all adds up into whatever it is that just happened. So instead, remind yourself that you don't know the whole story and spend a little time trying to find out um, what that story is. Ask them questions, figure out what it is that they were trying to achieve and um, make that be your, your focus uh, so that when you're actually thinking about this. You're not saying, oh, how could they use like, oh, you know exactly what it is that they were trying to do, which was a positive thing. Um, and then the other thing, here's a really fun, simple, um, but kind of mind blowingly odd thing to do, which is, you know, we often go into groups of strangers or sometimes even not strangers, our relatives, and just think that, um, people are, uh, judging us and instead and judging us negatively. Um, and instead imagine that everybody wants the best for you. Everybody wants you to be happy. Everybody is actually, even if, you know, you and they don't have the same definition of happiness, you and they don't have the same definition of best or success or whatever it is. Um, it, you know, just remember that they want you to be happy, that they actually want the best for you. They're just defining it differently than you perhaps, but if you go into a group and just have that in your mind, like just 
project out that like, what if everybody here wants the best for me? Um, it's a, can be a powerful way to experience a group. So that's all I have to say. Um, quick little overview of things to do for the holidays, um, dealing with complaints around you, dealing with your own complaints about the things that are happening around you. Um, again, so go on over to Amazon, check out, uh, no complaints, how to stop sabotaging your own joy. It's very short. Um, but the questions in there are pretty provocative and, uh, really they will pay off if you focus in and, really answer them. Take your time with it. You don't have to blast through it, but you can also just read through it and see whatever sticks because I tried to make it as simple for you to work with as possible. And I am <clears throat> Sienna Stewart. Um, I am with the No Complaining Project. We are on Facebook and also at gonoco.com. That's the blog, other free resources, and a lot of things to, uh, deal to read and listen to and um, some resources there for you as well if you go pick up the book. So that's it. And thank you.